it's not, we're not hiding the logic. We're just making sure we're not calling it if it's not supported. Exactly. So I can interact with the hardware button of a phone yeah. if it's running on an IoT device that doesn't have anything like that. Exactly. exactly. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice, yeah. And the bottom example there has scanner API. This is a kind of different uh, where uh, one of the other APIs in API information uh, is an API contract present. So mm. this is kind of saying, OK, has this device got a, got a scanner? And is it version 3 of that? Oh, so this exactly. isn't which device am I running on. This is how much of capability does this one device yeah. have? And I can add more functionality to my app. So it's very flexible. I mean, the bottom one, you won't be doing very much there as a developer. But the top one. Unless you're writing a scanning app. Unless you're running a, writing a scanning app, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do at runtime, making decisions about what code should be active at which particular times. But we're talking about these little edge cases. Don't think that, you know, this is, oh, it always sounds like it's going to be really complicated. It's yeah. just about making your app shine on particular devices. So when it's running on a phone, you can handle that hardware back. Now, some, app, some APIs are going to be deprecated. So let's take a look and see how we handle some of those different pieces. I mean, we know there are going to be some changes. This, there's only a few, to be honest, though, Jerry. You know, oh. yeah, it's good news. I mean, we really are. It's, it's, they, take, they took the 8.1 win RT API set and they moved it up to UAP and then they added loads of great new stuff as well. Ah. Um, but the one change that you will find if you're a Windows Phone 8.1 app developer, win RT app developer, yeah. you will have uh, used the, the and continue APIs, yeah, which that's a it's rough API. fair to say has not met. Rough API. It did not meet with wholehearted enthusiasm from our developer community. So. Very smart, the API is, for low-end devices. Yeah, so it, these were brought in, there's a whole set of these and, and continue APIs, which were all about making sure stuff worked really well on our low memory, cheap phone devices. The happy takeaway is they're gone. And the happy, yeah. So the, en they managed to engineer this problem away. So even on our low memory devices, we can use, so pick single file and continue has gone. And instead, we've now got pick single file async, which is exactly Two the same. Applause. Absolutely. It's the same across all of it. It's the Windows desktop model. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So that's on the C Sharp API side. We also know there are going to be some changes on the styles inside XAML. There are going to be some subtle changes. Yeah, you'll see some problems like this, particularly if you, like I said if you, before, if you created an app using the Windows Phone ah, yeah. templates, you'll see things like phone accent brush, and uh, there's a few list view items. There's a few styles that, uh, that it won't understand because they, they yeah. were specific to uh, phone on 8.1. So you just need to go through and replace all them with the standard, the, the common ones, or, or create, create your own styles. You can whatever. create your own style if it's really important sure, to you. Absolutely. Sure, you can. Yeah, yeah. It'd be an interesting shim, actually. Indeed. Yeah, well, yes, and that probably will happen. I would so guess. with charms gone, there's going to be some things we need to do. Yeah, the charms bar, we mentioned this, is not on Windows 10 devices. So some of your code, if you're porting up uh, from 8.1, might have you, expected it. A Windows 8 app runs on Windows 10, and if it relies on charms, there is a charm solution. Yep. But that's no longer a forward-looking solution. That's, that's right. just to make sure that those Windows 8 apps still work great. Yeah, so that's right. If you run a Windows 8.1, an app without doing all this upgrade stuff, and you just run that on a Windows 10 device, it will run just great. And in the title bar, you get a little drop-down menu where you see the, actually the charms and options come drop down from there. So yeah, so it, it's, um, they will work. But in order to get a really top quality experience, you want to convert to a true Windows 10 app. Basically move it onto the canvas. Yeah, exactly. Put a settings button on, on your menu sure. somewhere, on your UI, and share buttons on your UI, which if you're a phone developer, you've been doing already anyways. So. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so we've gone through all the code, but there is a design consideration. Yeah. And this, is, uh, depends where you come from and how much work you need to do here. But uh, you'll need to look at the UI that you've ported up. And then you will need to do some work to, uh, you know, if you've got a phone app, you would only have a UI that was designed for the phone. And then you'll need to expand that out and take that to, uh, to, the, uh, to the bigger screen devices and make sure that you've got a great experience regardless of the device you're running on. The great, the great news is all of this work We've already been trained thanks to the web, right? The web yeah. has already brought us up to speed about responsive design. Now it's just a matter of implementing that inside XAML, and we'll find a lot of controls and a lot of tooling to help us do that. Indeed, indeed. So why target UAP? Well, this is the big, the big win here. You can extend your app to multiple device families very easily by targeting the UAP. So it, it takes, you're getting to a great place for ex moving your app. I mean, you may have a great phone app, but hey, wouldn't it be awesome if that was running on, on tablets That's and right. PCs as well? And, right. We're not telling you that it has to run on a PC. If you no. want it only to run on the phone, then let it run on the phone. But now you've got options. And we don't target Windows anymore. We're targeting the UAP, so we yep. have 
across all kinds of, all kinds of devices are running UAP, so you've got a huge, potentially a huge user audience to go out there. Okay, so that was half of the story when we went through that demo. Yep. All right. So, yeah. So, let's pick it up again. Okay. And then let's kind of finish the job. All right. So, here we are. We were at this type load exception with, because we're running on desktop and it didn't know how to handle this back press. So, now we need to add this API information. Ah, there's metadata, what we yeah, talked about. Yeah, it's Windows dot, that's right, foundation. Yeah, dot metadata dot API information is type present. I see. And that takes a string, which is the name of, well, it's actually the hardware buttons API, which is windows.phone.ui. I see. So this is just a literal of the namespace. So you're asking, yep. is this namespace present? Yep. Is this action? So that is only going to be true on a phone device. So no. now we can run this on desktop. Hey, look at this. So no already error. we've got a phone app running on the desktop. Oh. Okay. So close, Andy. So close, yeah. I'm but this sorry. is these styles things we were talking about, oh, phone yeah. accent brushes, because this was a phone app. So we need to go in and change that. So let's just stop. And uh, easy, this is going to search our application for phone accent brush. So this is a brush that paints with the user's selected accent color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, what? well, it's a lot of matches, but actually we're only interested in the top four there. The other one, I don't quite know why it's turning up, but some weird thing about where the tools were at the moment. Oh, I see. So here we go, phone accent brush. Let's change this. A good um, substitute for that is the system color control accent brush, which kind of oh, means the same thing. that flows off the tongue. It, well, maybe not. But yeah. <laughs> um, and we got another couple of instances of that there as well, which is there, and again there. The design is having a bit of a fit here yeah. with this. Code. Yeah, it's... This is a Windows 10 preview uh, yeah. session, so yeah. just to so FYI. Just to remind you of that. Visual yes, Studio awesome. Everything is clean and, yeah. And the other view, I mean, I already know as well, I didn't bother running it to show you, but these list view items subheader, these um, are phone only, so I'm just going to change these for now to just a body, sure. which is a standard one. And we can tweak these later, change the styling a little bit, but hopefully this will be enough to get us running. Yeah. So here we are, back in the desktop app, and life is good, no and we've got, we've got a, uh, here's our, and look, in, look pivot, at that. pivot controls on both, and animations work, and now we can go off, look, it's all working. Now, that's pretty impressive, do you not think? I think I, it's pretty I do damaging. not think. I think it's impressive. So let's run it on the phone as well, just to show that it still runs on there. And that would we be are. sad, yeah, if it didn't. If it didn't, that would be disappointing, yeah. Um, but here we go. Nice. So, yeah, and Just like we would expect. Slightly new styling. Interesting. We got some work to do to change. You know, there's it, the light, and, the, and we can go and take a picture. We can go and take a picture. We can go. And, no, it doesn't want to take a picture. We'll fix this. What's going on? Edit. What's going on? Yeah, there's something wrong with <laughs> taking a picture. So let's go and have a look at that. Ah. Um, why did that code not execute? Yeah, well, you kept clicking it. I did. Why did that not work? Uh, I'm in the wrong. Where am I? Oh, this is the share contract stuff. That all. Let's go. But. Down here somewhere, here, oh, here we go. Here's the button photo click. Ah, oh, this is the dratted hash ifs things, because this, this file was designed, oh. this code has been designed to run on, you know, in a, in a, in a shared project. Right. So we assume we're running on, I don't know which one. Let's try the phone one first. So let's, let's just take all these pound ifs out. Comment out the Windows desktop version for now, and then uh, look at this. Pick single file continue. Continue. It is obsolete. It will be unavailable. Instead, use pick single file sync. So this is what we were talking about. It means we have now converged on the true Windows desktop model, which is the one that, as it should be, pick single file async. I see. Um, it's an await. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I need to fix that in a minute. We can just get rid of that. We change that to an await uh, async method. And we can also remove a lot of the other stuff that was lying around just to support that, that kind of clunky uh, and continue phone thing. So that was property was to do with the reactivation oh, when we come back. Getting so, much so it's getting cleaner, clean. yeah. Oh. And also in on the activation, because when it came back from picking your photo, we had all this only on phone. So that can all go as well. So we've got a nice This is terrific. It's beautiful, isn't it? Right. Uh, are we done? How are we done? Let's see. Let's see if we are we end to end picture, done. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that made are. sense, by the way, because yeah. uh, it was not being included no. in the build. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of styling work to do, but now we can take ourselves a picture. There Look. we go. Select that. Yeah. And there it is. And sharing still works, I would guess. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Ready into OneNote. Ready yeah. to go. 
-hmm. Nailed it again. Nailed it on Windows 10. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah. So that's nice. It's, I mean, you know, that wasn't, and that's a, that's a proper little app. It's, you know. Yeah, that's, that's realistic. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. So there you go. So that's, uh, well, just, you know, let's run it on the desktop just to make sure that uh, we really haven't broken anything. But yeah, a bit of repainting. That's the tools in a minute. And yeah, we can do all that kind of stuff on there as well. Uh, and it's all working. I won't bother taking that any further, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, so there we go. Now, now you, you, you want to just tweak your UI a little bit, make sure it runs across different, uh, different kinds of uh, devices. But yeah, we're all good. Well, that's a heck of a demo. I must say, everything perfect. The um, all right, let's 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 just kind of talk about what's going on and, and what's happening there. So, what about the Windows 8.1 Universal app? There's some things. Yeah. Every developer needs to kind of think through. Okay, so yeah, so that was a single head. We we took a phone app, and the pro process for doing a, a Windows 8.1 single headed app would be pretty good as well. Um, so when you want to migrate a, a, a 8.1 Universal Apps, the kind of process at the moment, and like I said, this is preview bit, so the mm -hmm. kind of process at the moment is you basically need to choose one of your heads, whether it's the phone one or the desktop head, yeah. to, to be the source, the project that you migrate, and you temporarily put the other one to one side. Yeah. You get, then go through the process that you, we basically did just showed you with a single head project and upgrade it and you end up with a UAP project but it's based on one of your 8.1 heads yeah uh, but the process will be no more complicated than I showed you you know uh, with that example we just went through now in an 8.1 universal app you will have this shared project most likely you will have a, you know, they will have a shared project yeah. where where it's where all the code is sits that actually um, is compiled into both of your your phone 8.1 uh, package or your your store your desktop package. Now, what do you want to do with that that shared folder? Well, actually, you uh, could just leave one. It. You could keep it. Just keep it. It's it's just a, a tool. A shared project is is just a tool for a way of storing stuff in a project that can e be easily shared with other projects. That's all it is. It's not. There's nothing magic about it. So you could just keep it, or you could take everything that's in that shared project and drag it and drop it into the head, and you've got a nice clean yeah. single project and no shared project involved. But quite a lot of the time, you're going to want to actually, you might want to support uh, your 8.1 app alongside your Right, your you still are going app. to have users so running then Windows 8. So a good way of doing that is, yeah, keep your shared code in that and actually uh, use Poundif to separate your 8.1 code from your Windows underscore UAP code. So it yeah. can get kind of messy and complicated. So, you know, your mileage will, will, will vary and it's up to you how you want to do that. But th th there's no kind of one right or wrong way with that. Merging the UI is going to be a little tricky because you're going to have XAML in two places yeah. and you're going to need to pick one. I mean, you can't just merge two files. You're going to need to pick one and then bring the UI of the other into the one you pick. Yeah, but there's a lot of tools coming to actually separate your views into uh, target-specific uh, yeah. areas. So uh, we should be able to take out uh, the, one, the one head that you kind of temporarily push to one side. You could drag those in and pop them into, say, you know, your, a... Um, a desktop folder and they'll be used on desktop devices. And Especially you know. if you're using great design practices because Especially. if you are then you know that everything's already abstracted yeah. between the two and they aren't unique. If, if you have a lot of code you might st still need to do some sort of customization to make sure that those that code that you've done in both places can work in one spot. But basically you're talking about one code behind file, multiple View XAML view files, so a XAML file, yeah. two XAML files, three XAML files, however many yeah. different distinct families you want to support. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that that was about the shared project. Uh, it can get complicated, but we've got you can use the pound if um, uh, to to separate out your 8.1 if you want to keep that. So let's have a very, very quick look at um, a kind of an example of, of the sort of thing that, that might happen. Ah, with, with a multiple head project. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start by creating myself a new project. I'm going to use the, uh, the it's a Windows 8.1 Universal App Hub App template. So this creates us a solution with a Windows, big Windows and a Windows Phone uh, project in it. And a shared project. So run it first on uh, the PC, so we can see what it does. And uh, it's just a lot of lot of grey squares. So we've got the hero pane there, and then you've got all the content uh, scrolling across to the right. And you can click on an item, navigate back, 
and that's kind of how it works. We can also run it on the on the on the phone. So change startup project. Run it on the emulator, and uh, obviously same same uh, logic, same data, and the UI has been uh, optimized for the phone here. You can navigate back, and you can click on a group and navigate back. So that's kind of how it works. Right now, let's look at uh, moving this project uh, up onto UAP. So let's start by adding a new project to my solution. I'm actually going to add an empty, a blank Windows 10 app. Let's call it hubapp.uap. And that's going to add that to solution because what I'm going to do is share the code between the 8.1 and the new UAP head. So we've now got three head projects in here. Uh, main page, I don't want that because the uh, hub page is the start page for this. I'm going to add a reference to the shared project, which is all of the shared logic, all the logic that already exists for the 8.1 solution. Uh, let's uh, let's just see how if that actually builds straight off. OK, so got a couple of problems. Principal one being that we've got two app.xamls in this at the moment, because there's one in the shared project. You can see it there. And there's also one in 